Oh, that's dark. <laughs> but you cannot see who is in this car right no. now. Hi. Okay, we're gonna leave because <laughs> I have neighbors. Um, mm -hmm. so we're just starting out the video. We just got the McDonald's. Fries. I got French fries. I got a McFlurry because I, I needed it. McFlurry, but yeah. Fries. And she got fries. So essentials before we start yes. the video. Bro, I'm talking about my sore cheek. <laughs> and she's crying laughing at me. You got a problem? <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hear me, but you're like, <laughs> I got a sore cheek, and it hurts, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, talk. Alright, here we go. How are you? Okay, again, we're going to start with would you rather questions or do you You know some? <laughs> You can look okay. at this if you want. Okay. So I'm going to ask her first. Okay. <sighs> I lost it. Oh, no. Okay. Would you or rather... I'm a bit giggly. She'll say. <laughs> Would you... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Would you rather always hit a red light for the rest of your life or always get slow internet after the sun goes down? Oh, this is gonna really bring out. I'm a teenager now. I would rather hit a red light because I stay up so late every night. Oh my god, I would be so mad. I a red light. I would. You know those days like, where you hit most red lights yeah. and you're like, like, it's my relaxation time at night. You know, like the but, internet. Yeah, I need music. I need. Like, that's my focus time. Okay. Would you rather <clears throat> fight a chicken to the death every time you get into a car or fight an orangutan to the death once a year, but you get a sword? Oh, I couldn't cut an orangutan. <laughs> um, you don't like chickens, so. I don't like chickens, so probably fight a chicken every time I get in the car. <laughs> but, like, could you... <laughs> <laughs> you have to go into your car. You're like, <laughs> I'm in the hood. It just pops up. I'm in the hood right now. So could you imagine? <laughs> Every time I close my door to walk outside to my car, they hear my door shut. Everybody just looking out their window. I mean, like, walking over to my car, like. Like, as soon as the door opens, would you rather okay. eat a live worm mm -hmm. or be locked in a room with a tarantula for an hour and not know where the tarantula is? I feel like eat a worm. I would rather just down that worm, get it over with. <laughs> you would eat a worm. I would do the tarantula because I feel well, like, I would be like, I know, but like, come out of it on the ceiling and you don't know it's there the whole time and it just drops down. Would you rather only be able to only be able to wash your hair twice a year or only be able to check your phone once a day? I only be able to check my phone once a day. You'd be okay with that? Yeah. yeah you, you, have you seen my hair? Yeah. It'd be smelly. It'd be I'd smelly? Probably, I'd probably It'd get be. dreads. You would have dreads, yeah. naturally. Yeah. Bro. I wake up and... and what about, like, does they wash your hair? Yeah. I mean, what about, like, dry shampoo and all that? That would build up so fast. I know. Hair, man. Twice a year? Okay. I mean, eventually you're actually, it's really cool. They didn't say how long you didn't check your phone, though. That's true. Just the entire day you're just, just on it once. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. Gosh. Literally speak for themselves. Look at how chaotic it was.
big year to be would really take hold of what's happening right now because I felt this push to at least talk about it even though everybody has their opinions on it everybody has their own take on what happened um but I just I felt moved to at least discuss it over the years there have been tons of casualties tons of dramatic things that have happened that people tend to just forget about or move on from that we don't really cause a fuss about like there's so many things that happen that are huge deals um bombings and people going missing and murders and all this stuff you know it it's still a problem day to day um it's still something that happens literally every day um but it's it's more publicized and more broadcast when it's somebody who's known or somebody who it, it's a mass casualty to where it can't be swept under the rug mm -hmm. so i just want to say first that i'm not talking about this because it's the only huge thing going on right now i'm talking about it because i feel an opportunity to kind of speak to other people about it um who either don't know what happened or don't understand um, or are just very confused on what they experienced during this thing so we're just gonna jump right into that so first I'm going to talk about what happened in this mass mass casualty so obviously you've seen or maybe you haven't seen everything happen with the Travis Scott stuff and um, Astro Fest and all of that stuff so if you don't know what happened and you don't understand what happened or what's going on or maybe you saw the headline and didn't click on it we're actually going to dive a little bit into what has been reported and what people who have been there have reported so first i'm going to talk about how there were eight confirmed deaths um responded to on site so that means people who were dead when they got to them there were eight. Um, there were 11 deaths reported, so people who had either been revived or are in the hospital right now, um, as one of the EMTs that was working there has said, by now they could be vegetables. Like they could be just not really people anymore. Um, a lot of them are just not responsive or in a coma from what has happened. Um, hundreds injured, but as I've been digging and really just kind of seeing the videos of multiple people who were there have spoken out about how they don't believe what social media and the media is saying in general and news is saying because what they witnessed um, felt like a lot more than just eight deaths. Now, I can't confirm or deny. I can't, I don't have proof I wasn't there. He knowingly let his fans hurt each other. Yep. That's my first base. Like, he knew that people were hurting each other and did nothing about it. He saw, he saw right. everything that happened. Right. Then, when he was told what was happening, because there's video proof of people actually going up on like next to the camera crews and everything else telling them people need help people are dying you need to stop the show right now mm -hmm. um obviously travis has a earpiece yeah obviously nobody said anything but then two guys came out on stage walked up to him and said um there there's people like hurt like out there you mm -hmm. people are asking to stop the show like we need to stop this yeah. and he said you know what you came here for, let's rage. And he continued the show. Like I said, multiple people were screaming in this, like there's video proof yeah. of multiple people chanting, stop the show, stop the show. That doesn't just happen. No. Like you're not at a show and people chant for you to stop the show. Yeah. That's not, that does not happen. No. They paid to be there. Mm -hmm. Obviously they want to see a show. When they're chanting to stop the show, obviously something is seriously wrong. Again, these are people who paid to go to this event. Now, digging into the whole experience, digging into what I'm really here to talk about, and that we both have had a lot of 
pull and feelings towards is what people truly experienced at this show. That's not what people do. <laughs> they usually care about the audience, let alone when there's actual members of the audience genuinely begging for help. This is Sienna Faith begging for anybody to jump in and stop this. She's literally begging the cameraman for help. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about this Travis Scott concert. There aren't a lot of specific details on the amount of bodies that were killed and the amount of bodies that were injured. But here's the thing that I want to tell you. These artists, they have an agenda that they need to put out. And they're also a part of secret societies. I can't say certain things because they will be in this video that they are a part of. They have certain things that they need to carry out and they're going to get that agenda out there one way or another. <laughs> experienced anything like that in my entire life probably because I've never been surrounded by so many lifeless bodies I haven't been able to stop thinking about what was happening all around me it was so demonic the energy was so demonic the set was demonic Travis was demonic we were literally in hell. Like, it felt like we were in hell. Nobody could breathe. We were all suffocating. Everybody around me was suffocating. We were standing on our tiptoes. And all you see is <gasps> everyone around you, chins up, <gasps> gasping for air. And that's all you see around you. Let's get real about something. I'm an ex-witch saved out of the occult after nearly a decade, longer unofficially, by the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's talk about symbolism and how the spirit realm always reflects in the natural. Anyone who is in the occult who knows what they're doing or they're practicing some form of high magic, they understand how important symbolism is. It's not just a way for us to express ourselves. Symbolism has great power because what we see in the natural always yes. reflects something that is happening similarly in the spirit realm. Y'all believe in archetypes, you believe in zodiac, you believe in bad vibes, you believe in so many things when it comes to receiving signs outside of yourself, things that tell you what might be going on in the spirit. But when it comes to satanic symbolism in the mainstream media, y'all think we're satanic because it's a joke. It's just, you know, it's just something to um, blow off the church. They're just making a statement. No. <laughs> I'm here to tell you that the law of reflection when it comes to what's happening in the spirit showing up here is happening whether we know it or not. When we are demonically oppressed, when we are affected by demonic entities and their story, their narrative is being played out through us, we have no choice but to outwardly express the symbolism of which we are under. When I was in the occult, I fully, fully thought that I was literally doing God's work. I just wanted to be loved. I wanted to love others. I wanted to do magic. I wanted to have a whimsical, beautiful experience with life. Like, I thought I understood. And I thought I was doing good, always. Yet, 
I had a very strange fascination with looking like a straight demon. Maybe Travis intended for this to happen, because otherwise he would have stopped the show, but he kept going. And before you say I'm reaching, literally the entrance to the festival is you walking into his mouth, and the inside is designed like the inside of hell. Like, and everybody described it to be like hell. It's not a coincidence, there's no way. And there's literal video footage of Travis looking down at an unalived body in the crowd, getting escorted through the crowd, and him continuing to sing. Look. <laughs> said when they first showed up they just had this sense of discomfort mm -hmm. um things were weird just got like a weird vibe there was this one kid who made a video and i couldn't find it again to be honest so i don't know if i'm gonna be able to show it he said when they got to the show hours prior to when it was supposed to happen mm -hmm. he was playing this Frequency music. low frequency music that was like the same beat over and over and over again for hours hours which is a little weird mm -hmm. little weird so yeah. people said they just didn't like the music it was starting to like mess with them mm -hmm. they were starting to like feel like headaches yeah. and just discomfort through just the music alone mm -hmm. the setup of the gate is literally like his head and mm -hmm. you have to walk through his mouth to get to where you're going so you yeah. walk through his mouth and then there's two separate places where the people go yeah. and then there's like the main aisle where like all the vip people and special mm -hmm. people go in and out and stuff like that yeah um and then here's where it gets weird his stage is literally a cross mm -hmm. but the cross is inverted so it's like this and then yeah so technically upside down to the other people but to him he's walking up the cross if that yeah. makes sense and behind him is a portal yes um and then on top of the portal is a volcano-esque type mm -hmm. mountain thing and it's just, it was like a random thing but it looks like a volcano like, yes literally it's not a volcano but it is. Yeah, like, the stage is an inverted cross leading to a portal into hell. This is where the tragedy occurred last night where eight people lost their lives. Anyone else? The background said a couple weird things. Um, I think it said um, something about see you on the other side. Yeah. That was one of them. There's a big red yep. circle sign. Yep. See you on the other Look side. Over. There's a lot of eyes, which we know what that means. Yeah. Um one eye and then there was a lot of symbolism that had to do with satan in my opinion people people started noticing it that didn't even that don't even believe in god like they started realizing really quickly this um, isn't what they expected this, like, yeah this is not what they it's expected it's a lot darker than right what they even thought like. and they all like there was a couple of videos that atheists made that said mm -hmm. i don't I consider myself an atheist, but when I was at this show, I felt this presence that I've never felt before that was really dark and horrifying, and I, I just didn't want to be there. Like, um, there's literally individuals you can hear literally screaming, screaming for their lives. Yeah, and it's, it's horrifying to hear because you think, like, how bad, like, you can think how bad that really feels. But to be experiencing and stuck in that, yeah, to really be in that situation where you're like, I don't know if I'm going to get out of yeah. here alive. And on top of it, somebody had already died, mm -hmm. like, pretty fast. Yeah. Um, the EMT gave his timeline, and his timeline showed, like, it was pretty fast that mm -hmm. everything escalated. Like, he was responding to one person who was unconscious, no pulse, 
um, and so he was going back to get something to revive them and on his way back to them he had two other encounters where people were doing CPR yeah. on other in individuals and he realized really fast that, that was only a small portion of what was really happening. Yeah. Um, I don't so know if you showed the video but there's literally a part where Travis Scott is looking down at one of the people passed out and right. he did nothing. Right. He is looking down on them. He's on a pedestal. He's mm -hmm. And that's what's also horrifying, yeah. is he's on a pedestal. Obviously, we know he's the baby daddy for Kylie Jenner. Yeah. Um, and the Jenners have posted some pretty questionable things. Yeah. Um, I sent to her. Kylie posted um, a Halloween picture, but she's literally very dark, drenched in blood, sitting on the ground, just posing head to toe. Sharp nails. Sharp nails literally just looking kind of crazy yeah. sitting in blood and i sent it to her and I, this was before everything happened and i said i have a weird feeling about this yeah like it was too dark to even be halloween right like nobody does that right like nobody posts literally drenched in there's creativity like you right. have makeup there's creativity in it there's they're not just drenched in blood yeah there's always a main like what they're trying to right. get like not just blood right she was literally looked like she committed a mass murder yeah. and was just sitting in the middle of it yeah um and people were making jokes about it mm -hmm. like period jokes whatever yeah but it just didn't sit right with me and mm -hmm. then obviously there's been reports of like obviously kanye did something really questionable not too long ago um, during his concert, he like floated up to the ceiling. Um, he was doing like ritual stuff yeah. that people picked up on that they just felt like something was like attached to them after they yeah. went to a show um, and just felt really like icky. But it was just small things. So it, right. did, it did feel like it was leading up to something. And then this happens. Yeah. And obviously, all the Jenners were there. So yeah. Kylie. Um, it was in honor. It was pretty much in honor of. Well, sort of. Well, they, yeah, there's but no, it was. Like, yeah. It was on Chris Jenner's birthday, 66th yeah. birthday of all numbers. Yeah. Um, 66th birthday, which, when people believe in, and I don't know if this is true or not, but when people believe in satanic stuff and they actually worship the devil. Yeah. Birthdays are a huge time to rejuvenate yourself mm -hmm. with a sacrifice. Yeah. It's evil, it's scary, it's disgusting, and it's hard to grasp, and it's hard to believe. Yeah. But it happens, mm -hmm. and it's more common than we actually realize. Yeah. Um, it's happening a lot, and people just think that other people are missing, and just yeah. these murderers are just committing murders when there's actually a huge line of people who are making this happen for a reason. Yeah. Um, and it's, I can't even grasp it myself. Mm -hmm. And so when all of this happened and all this stuff caught my attention before this all happened and then this mass casualty happened, I felt something within me that realized how many people realized that this was a hell on earth. It struck a lot of people in ways that they started realizing that music and symbolism um, is scary sometimes. Yeah. And I never, I was a person who never really looked into symbolism. Yeah. I'm not like about symbols. Mm -hmm. I don't look at that stuff, but also I didn't realize how 
how bold people are with their symbolism that they want to shove it in everybody's face and also yeah. be like it's right there in front of everybody yeah. and they don't I, look at it earlier we were talking about it and i literally looked up his instagram page and literally every post you could spot some sort of symbolism mm -hmm. there like one eyeball there was some weird symbols there was these just devilish i could tell it was evil right, like without horns or something yeah. that popped up that it just didn't just it didn't dark. fit it just didn't fit in what was happening yeah. so why is it there yeah you know? so this whole thing with Travis Scott, obviously there's multiple things that play throughout Astro Fest that show what yeah. is actually going on. Yep. As we come out of that, and as we, I mean, I have felt unsettled about it since yeah. it all happened. Obviously my heart goes out to everybody mm -hmm. who has been hurt or Yes. The deaths that have come from this and lost their children, lost their siblings, what whatever they were to somebody, yeah. they were a person and they were a human being that didn't get cared about in that moment. Yeah. Um, what is starting to come out of this that has really compelled me to talk about it mm -hmm. is that what are you going to do with this? Yeah. So what what now that you've experienced the hell on earth? And you have acknowledged that this was satanic and that obviously the devil is real. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do with it? Yeah. How are you going to avoid a life of that? Yeah. A, an eternal life of the devil. Mm -hmm. How are you going to escape it? And if you don't know how to, um, if that spooked you in a way that you know you don't want to live that life, you mm -hmm. know you don't want that for the rest of your eternity yeah. this is a time to maybe start acknowledging that there is a god yeah and that hell he, is real hell is real and heaven is real and, and yeah. if you have a hard time grasping any of those obviously you just grasped hell yeah you did yeah. and there's no denying that this stuff is real and people really do serve the devil just as people serve god listening to Travis Scott ever again. Maybe you just turn on Lauren Daigle. You turn on something maybe you're not really familiar with to see the experience yeah. of the other side of this. Listen to Christian rappers. Right. Listen to Christian rock music. There's so much out there. Right. If you really look, do you know how many metal Christian bands there are? Right. Like, you literally look it up, and there's thousands. Right. And, you know, instead of surrounding yourself with literal satanic music, why not try that for a change? Why not surround yourself? You know, it's still heavy metal, and you can right. still rock out to it. Like, right. Maybe you just don't know what to do with this, and maybe you're so overwhelmed with fear of what you experienced yeah. and i want to encourage you that that doesn't have to be your life and i have seen things and i've experienced things that helped me to know that the devil is real mm -hmm. and the devil is really trying to take over things yeah. and things are getting so much harder to deal with day to day mm -hmm. in this world um but i also know that i serve a god that is way far beyond yeah. what satan could ever try to be so mm -hmm. obviously i know that but satan doesn't have power if you have god in your life right 
and he can't touch you if you have God there right as your shield right and he will try and, and I'm not saying mm -hmm. things are gonna be easy going oh, and no. smooth trying to follow God like literally following God is so hard to do oh, and yeah. so hard to understand at times mm -hmm. but through sticking it out I have experienced things and been blessed with things that I never thought that I could even overcome yeah. um I'm starting to understand things and understanding God is coming a lot easier now that I've stuck it out mm -hmm. and it's not an easy road and it's not easy to get started I've just felt compelled to encourage you to maybe look at the other side um it's scary yeah. it's ex it's a scary experience but there's so much that you could learn through this and yeah. push through this I mean I I have seen a person that I have seen death that is horrifying. I haven't seen it in a casualty like that, but it's horrifying mm -hmm. and traumatizing. Yeah. But there are ways that you can overcome it mm -hmm. and not be ex like experiencing that again yeah. because the last thing I want is for people to experience a burning alive sensation yeah. and screaming people yeah. and saying this is hell on earth and not knowing how to get away from it. Yeah. Um, I'm not a perfect person no, and it's a hard path, but I think it's definitely worth it. Oh, and yeah. I have been able to outreach and help people um, get away from that yeah. before just by simply praying mm -hmm. and it's been a crazy experience um, so we both have just felt like this happened and there we can't change that it happened wow. but we can change the fact that people don't have to experience eternal life like that encourage you to to not <laughs> listen to him anymore to not support people like him who have an agenda that's not for you like your human being like it's not it's about money and fame mm -hmm. and getting to the top it's yeah. all evil yeah. and not something that I just want to pass it's just following him on social media. Right. Like that's still supporting him. Right. Because once you interact with a like an Instagram post or a like follow his account that brings him just a little bit more fame that he can take and feel good about right which that's not supposed to have you that's not how you're supposed to take fame going to just keep happening over and over and over again and there's no stopping it yeah. um because you can't really stop humans from being awful no. humans no. but you can also reach out to the ones who will listen will listen and being hurt and acknowledging like that was screwed up yeah. and I don't understand it and I can't grasp it but I know I don't want that yeah now you know you don't want that mm -hmm. so yeah. what what are you gonna do what are you mm -hmm. gonna do to change that and obviously if you have questions like you can always reach out to me on social media um, with any any questions that you have and just even if you have questions you feel are silly or dumb just yeah. do it like I'm not gonna shame you for no. feeling that way but I'm also not gonna stand there and argue yeah about the importance of Travis Scott because obviously he has decided what he wants to do oh, and yeah. that's burn people alive and make them suffocate in crowds yeah. that's scary to be so numb and so disconnected from human life and well-being of others that you just watch somebody die yeah. at your show you that you have control over. 
and sing over them yeah like that's horrifying that's like and it was almost in a cocky manner it he was just even... absorbing everything that was happening yeah like, he was just it was giving him more life almost yeah. and it was horrifying like it like the symbolism at the front of the people walking through yeah. his mouth yeah and then that happens yeah and you can just see it like he's absorbing the death and yeah he's taking he's literally taking their lives God's message about it right we had to get it out to the world and not just talk about you know we have to talk about the dark that happened but we need to talk about the light that can come from it. Right. Throwing out different singers that have, excuse me, it's the light, it's light. <laughs> Symbolism within their music videos or show like yeah. what they're into. Beyonce. Beyonce, Katy Perry, people like that who literally are singing about transforming into a life of the devil. Yeah. Um, unexplainable like it's mm -hmm. right there it's been right there for years and years like and years in my face does does stepping foot into a church really scare you as much as a life of that yeah. like yeah churches fail and yeah churches there's a lot of all churches have flaws right and there are churches that are snooty and yeah. that push people away and yeah. that um judge you as soon as you walk in the door i have experienced that multiple times in my life yeah. visiting other churches where i walk in and immediately people just it's they will t does that really seem so scary anymore to you does yeah. that really seem so impossible to do yeah um and also contacting a pastor or contacting somebody with questions um does that seem so scary anymore now that yeah. you've experienced that and what's stopping you so that's my that's why i just feel like yeah if that really scares you so bad what is stopping you from figuring out what what's the, what the possibility is of living for god yeah.